Good afternoon. Well, the weather's fooled me until a few moments ago. Uh, there wasn't any rain. And it's kind of an Irish shower. <laughs> that is, there's one every day, and it's light, and it's not a driven rain. But it's there, and if you stand out soggy enough for long enough, you get real wet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if I'm going to cut this short or not because the, my phone doesn't work underneath water. Uh, there's a poll today that came out from ABC that we all have to pay attention to because it may be the last alarm we get before Trump becomes president. Now, let me say that again. I've noticed other people are doing that and I don't usually do it because I think it's annoying. But I think we're at a point where if we don't get in gear, Trump, even indicted, will get elected. So how do we avoid that? First of all, let's consider what the poll says. Americans doubt that Biden has sufficient mental acuity to do the job. Now, do you? No. Do I? No. But there's been a campaign against him, and it's a buzz, and it's in the air, and this stuff gets sticky, and then all of a sudden, you lack mental acuity. 63% have that question. They also say his support against leading Republican challengers is shakier. And what they're talking about is they're talking about Trump and DeSantis. That is a fire alarm like nothing else. Now, we've been talking about the policies of this administration, but what the poll tells us is that's not what the people are looking at. And, you know, the, the, the question often... In these elections, we got, oh, by the way, did you hear that? We got some, uh, <laughs> some sheep here. Uh, maybe you can see one. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw that or not. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the people, uh, are looking at this as a referendum on Biden rather than a question of, policy and direction. It's not a choice election right now. It's a referendum election. And the Dems are split right down the middle, according to this poll, I think 47-47, for another nominee other than Biden. Now, I don't see that happening. And I've lived through a couple of those races. I mean, I supported Ted Kennedy back in 1980 in a primary against uh, Mr. Carter. And uh, some say it damaged him into the general election, but I think the reasons that I supported Ted were the reasons that he lost. And so I don't think it's enough to say because you have a primary challenge, that's the outcome. But I think it would be the outcome here, because the only person in the political firmament we know is Biden. And so that's, that's the problem. We have uh, those, you know, about 58% are democratic leaning uh, and they're they're leaning toward Biden but we're losing in these different groups and that's significant because what are we going to have and, and take one of the policy issues the economy Trump they think would run the economy better <laughs> 54% for him 36% for Biden so this is pretty scary now, what is the one indicator that I think is significant? 56%, without regard to party or independence or anything else, they think Trump should face charges. That's the key. And how is that the key? The same thing I've been saying <laughs> since January 6th. Go after these guys. What is the, the dead horse in the center of the room? It's Trump's crimes. The President of the United States and the Attorney General are doing nada, nothing about it. Bupkis, we have to act. Now, what would be a dramatic act to change this? Well, the way we could change it would be fire our Attorney General, who is a place saver at best. And you might say, who would we put in this place? Well, let's take people at their word. If Black Jack Smith is the real thing, make him the AG. Have him continue to prosecute the case. And let's open up this son of a bitch in case and go to town on the criminal who would be president instead of Biden. Uh, well, it is raining a little bit more. <laughs> Let me talk about Durbin. This satiny-voiced senator 
whom I respect and who's very smart and does his homework, is as much a victim as any politician is of going along, if you will, the established rule of thumb world. But I and my kind of people, and probably you, seek to challenge the rule of thumb world because our impression of that rule of thumb world is that we can do better and that we suffer because of it. And people don't do things because people don't do that. Now, what is the particular issue? On the talking heads, he was talking about Thomas. And he was saying, well, you know, we, uh, we, we could write a, an ethics law, but maybe the courts have to do that. And uh, we could issue a subpoena, but maybe we can't under the separation of powers. Read the goddamn Constitution. What is impeachment if not a break in the separation of powers because one branch of the government is not doing their damn job? So uh, <laughs> I may succumb to the rain. And the uh, shootings ban the weapons. All this mealy mouth talk. One of us is going to be dead because these assholes won't pass a law because people are in their pockets so far up that they can't do anything. And another message is campaign against every Democrat for another Democrat who will actually represent us. Vote for no Republicans in any case, anywhere, for any office, including justice of the peace. They're a danger to our republic and we cannot withstand them. So, that's my story. And I'm going to uh, withdraw from my cathedral of trees and I'll talk to you tomorrow and maybe it's drier. <laughs>